In 1946, a man by the name of Samuel Mullins was creating a doll, which would later become known as Annabelle. Samuel's daughter, Annabelle, expressed her desire to play hide-and-seek. Samuel discovered her hiding place and playfully tickled her, with his wife Esther joining in the fun. Subsequently, the Mullins family attended a church service. During the gathering, someone inquired about Samuel's dolls, to which Esther responded that they were prepared. On their way back home, they experienced a flat tire. In an attempt to halt a passing vehicle, Esther made an effort, but tragically, their daughter, B, was struck and killed while attempting to retrieve a bolt. Twelve years later, in 1958, a nun named Sister Charlotte was accompanying six orphan girls in a van. Among the girls was Janice, who had a disability. They visited the Mullins residence, which had been transformed into an orphanage. Details regarding Esther's past accident were limited. Samuel proceeded to show Janice a chairlift that had been specifically constructed for Esther. The girls made their room selections, and Janice and her friend Linda decided to share one. Janice expressed her desire to enter B's room, but Samuel insisted that it remain locked. The girls ventured outside to explore. Linda wished to stay by Janice's side, but Janice wanted to be treated equally, so she allowed Linda to go and play. While alone, Janice had a sensation of someone's presence nearby. She caught a glimpse of something in the mirror, but upon closer inspection, nothing was there. During the night, Janice ventured out of her own room and entered B's unlocked room. Inside, she discovered B's old toys, and stumbled upon a key that unlocked a concealed door. The room's walls were adorned with pages from a Bible, and she also encountered the doll crafted by Samuel. Overwhelmed by fear, Janice attempted to leave, but the door stubbornly kept opening. Spotting Samuel outside, she hastily ran back to her own room. During the dinner, Carol glances into Esther's room and witnesses Esther reaching out to Samuel. Charlotte advises her against being overly curious or intrusive. Later on, Carol and Nancy engage in sharing ghost stories revolving around Esther. They suddenly hear the sound of Esther's bell and footsteps, which then abruptly cease, leaving an eerie silence. Unexpectedly, Carol finds herself grabbed by a hand, and a spectral woman materializes before them. Charlotte rushes to their aid upon hearing the girls' screams. Charlotte apologizes to Samuel for any disturbance caused by the girls. She proceeds to show him a photograph featuring herself and her former companions from the convent. While examining the picture, Samuel notices a nun who Charlotte had not previously mentioned. Strangely enough, this particular nun bears a striking resemblance to the ghostly apparition depicted in the movie Conjuring 2. Once again, Janice finds herself wide awake while the others are sound asleep. She ventures out of her room and is caught red-handed by Linda as she enters B's room. Linda quickly departs, frightened of potential consequences. Janice is startled by eerie noises and catches sight of a figure lurking within the shadows. In an attempt to flee, she employs the chairlift, but the ghostly presence seizes her and forcefully drops her back. Janice is subsequently rushed to the hospital, but she doesn't remain there for long before returning home. Samuel proceeds to visit Esther's room, where he suggests that what happened to Janice bears similarities to a past experience they have encountered. However, Esther attempts to dismiss it as a mere accident. The haunting intensifies further. Janice witnesses the presence of B within her own room. When Janice inquires about the ghost's intentions, B's countenance transforms into a menacing expression, and she utters the chilling words, your soul. Janice desperately tries to flee, but the ghost seizes her and forces her to ingest a dark substance. Janice appears to be fine, but Linda senses that something is amiss. She confides in Samuel, revealing that she and Janice had entered B's room. However, Samuel becomes furious when the doll is mentioned and sternly warns Linda to steer clear of it. Returning inside the house, Samuel discovers the doll positioned on the dining table. Adjacent to it, there is a note bearing the words found you. Initially resembling Janice, the ghostly entity swiftly transforms into its truly terrifying form. Samuel attempts to employ a cross as a protective measure, but the ghost shatters his fingers and ultimately takes his life. It is Charlotte who discovers Samuel's lifeless body. Curious about the doll, Charlotte questions Esther. Esther becomes frightened upon seeing it but proceeds to disclose the truth to Charlotte. After Bee's passing, they long to communicate with her once more. 
A spirit claiming to be B had requested permission to inhabit the doll, and they had consented. Initially, they were filled with joy, but the spirit turned hostile, attacking and injuring Esther. Esther shows Charlotte her wounded eye. Following the priest's blessing on the house, they sealed the doll within the room. Esther unequivocally states that the doll poses a grave danger. Charlotte endeavors to evacuate the girls, but Janice is nowhere to be found. A frantic search ensues, filled with growing apprehension. Unfortunately, Janice, under the influence of the demon, seizes Charlotte and forcefully hurls her into a mirror. Some of the girls seek refuge in the barn, but Carol becomes ensnared and experiences terror in the presence of a menacing scarecrow. She manages to escape unharmed before it can inflict any harm upon her. The shocking discovery of Esther's lifeless body reveals an unsettling sight, her upper torso suspended from the wall. To everyone's horror, Esther's detached top half becomes possessed and launches a menacing attack against the girls. In an attempt to rid themselves of the doll's malevolent influence, Linda seizes it and hastily rushes toward a nearby well. Charlotte follows closely behind. Linda casts the doll into the well, but as she listens intently, she hears an eerie sound emanating from within. Peering down into the depths, she narrowly avoids being pulled in by the demon, thanks to Charlotte's timely intervention. They seal the well tightly as a sinister force attempts to emerge and swiftly make their way back to the safety of the house. Janice, driven by a sinister force, wields a knife with harmful intent towards Linda. However, Charlotte intervenes, entering B's room with the doll. Janice directs her attack towards the doll, stabbing it, and in a swift move, Charlotte pushes both Janice and the doll into the confines of the closet. The police arrive and conduct a thorough search of B's room, where only the doll remains within the closet. Janice managed to escape through a hole in the wall and is nowhere to be found within the house. Charlotte and the girls ultimately depart from the Mullins residence, leaving Linda longing for her missing friend. At a later time, Pete and Sharon Higgins pay a visit to an orphanage. To their surprise, they come across Janice, who now goes by the name Annabelle. Impressed by her, they decide to adopt her into their family. As a gesture, they present her with a raggedy and doll, resembling the original Annabelle doll. In the year 1970, 12 years after the initial events, the Higgins family peacefully slumbers until a noise startles them awake. Pete, driven by curiosity, takes it upon himself to investigate, but his actions have dire consequences as Annabelle, the malevolent doll, ruthlessly slashes his throat. Simultaneously, Annabelle's accomplice, her boyfriend, enters the scene with sinister intentions towards Sharon. Meanwhile, in the neighboring house, John and Mia Gordon awaken to the commotion and John bravely ventures next door to assess the situation. As the credits roll, a chilling scene unfolds, revealing Annabelle confined within a room enveloped by Bible pages. The camera ominously zooms in on her face, and she turns her gaze towards the audience, creating an unsettling connection between the on-screen presence and the viewers. After the credits, the story takes a new direction as the focus shifts to Romania. The nun, a haunting character introduced in The Conjuring 2, makes an appearance in this new setting. This glimpse hints at further supernatural encounters and storylines involving the enigmatic nun, expanding the eerie universe of The Conjuring franchise.